XYZ coordinates are three dimensional. This is how they track satellites. This is how we can zero in and know exactly where your spine is needing to be adjusted. When we check your posture, the notch right here is right here. It's the, it's the center for posture. We then measure up to your chin and measure up to your belly button. We just look at it. We can see if you're shifted this way, this way, twisted, whatever. Okay? The next thing we look for is we look for the side. In the center of the shoulder, it should land with the center of the ear. You can see this guy's got forward head posture. Then the ankle bone should be right on his line. This guy's leaning like this. He's going to incorporate so much muscle activity here, by the end of the day, he's going to be going like this. Or why don't you sit down? He's out of balance. Okay. Here's the center notch. That's called translation. We look at the head this way, this way. If his head is over here, he's compressing on the disjoints and nerves on this side, and he's stretching them here. It won't last. Let's say he's driving to work. How'd you get this? He's driving to work, and all of a sudden, he's leaning on the car, lifting up his left arm up like this. How many people do you see driving like that? Sometimes you look at it and you say, who's driving that car? I see a head in the middle. I don't see any head behind the wheel, because they're leaning like this so much, like James Dean. Here is forward head. He's exaggerating this for the picture, but you see what I'm saying? This has to be over here. But we see this a lot, and this is why people develop that bump here over the years. Because the tissues are remodeling, they're getting damaged, and they're building thicker and thicker. Okay? Here, we're looking at some distortions. You can see how his foot is back, okay? His, his whole torso is over this side, so now he's going to carry weight on the joints, not in the center part of the vertebrae, okay? Here, look at his shoulders rotated. This type of configuration, we're going to see a lot of neck problems here. You can have heart flutters. You can have asthma. You can have thyroid problems because then you're, his head's going this way, but his upper back's going this way. It's like a dish rag effect. It's twisted. We look on this one. Okay, his pelvis is shifted over here. You can see how the crotch line is skewed. He's, again, going to have problems in the discs of his lower back. Head's shifted over the other side. Here the pelvis is rotated. This will wear, the, the pel wear a disc out and it will wear a hip joint out ten times faster. This is the big kahuna. This is the worst postural distortion we see. This is the worst one for your body. Because when that hip is twisted, you're going to blow a hip. They'll wear out. They'll just wear out. Where your leg is coming into your pelvis is going to wear out. Plus you're going to take the disc and you're, gonna, you're torsioning the disc. That's the bad guy. And this one will shoot pain into the groin, into the private areas, into the anal area, down the leg. Sometimes they'll go up and they'll go, oh gosh, what was that? We measure off certain bones in the neck. They should all be 42 degree angles because these are all the same curves. So here's the seven, here's number two, should intersect between four and five. If you've got a neck that only has one of these lines, you're in big trouble. You've got that kyphosis one. That's not good. This bone over here should be 30, uh, 30 degrees so the skull is sitting properly. You know why? This is your brain stem. Hormone, immune center. Here's a bad one. Look, compressed up here, way forward, 44 millimeters, 42 millimeters forward, lots of compression on these discs. Okay? Here's one that's reversed. Already the body's building in arthritis and spurring. Arthritis or degeneration is the same thing. Degenerative arthritis, where this is when the body's building in bone, spurs where they don't belong. The problem is it's, the body's doing it because it's wise. It's saying, well, your head's way over here. I need to put more bone over here to hold you up. But the problem is that limits motion and it breaks down the nervous system. Here's a reverse one. Once again, all you've got to do to feel what this patient's going through is take your hand on a relaxed position, bend it backwards. That's what your spinal cord is going through 24-7. We don't see people over 65 years old with necks like this. Don't see them. Because the spinal cord breaks down. They did studies and they found in the journal of spine. This will break the spinal cord, damage it, and a patient will die. Full spine, we look at the left side, the right side, there's the heart. So looking at somebody from the back, skull, shoulders, hips, level across, spine nice and straight. These are weight bearing points. When we check your spine, we're looking to measure the point off the center line. So we're seeing. All these different supplications, these are ones that affect the male function, the female function, the bladder, uterus, ovary, prostate, colon, kidney, up here is kidney. So this is pretty good here, it's right on the center of the line, but these are all way off, 19 millimeters off. So on a scale of 1 to 10, that's like a 10. Anything over 20 is really bad. 
This is the mechanism of your whiplash. Now just understand something. When a whiplash occurs, the front side of the muscles turn on and these and the back side turn off. Don't ask me why. I don't know. But I know that the research shows that. Here's the study right there. Capsule ligament injury, deactivation of mechanoreceptors, proprioceptive role affected by segmental adversity, uh, adversity affected, <laughs> spinal manipulation may help activate the receptor to restore the proprioceptive input. Big words. Just know that this is turned on, this is turned off, we reestablished that. But your neck can be in all these weird configurations. The most important thing about this poster is this. Whiplashes are not car accidents. They're mechanisms that, it's a mechanism that can happen with all types of different things. There's the study right there when I was just reading. Okay, now let's go through this. If you have forward head posture, you will be given this thing to use. If you don't have forward head posture, but you don't have a good curve in your neck, you will be given this. This is called the Denner Roll. This is called the Dakota Unit. You don't have to remember that. But the Denner Roll is from Australia. I thought it was a dinner roll when I first thought that. Put a little butter on it, right? Yeah. Just kidding. Okay, so here's what you want to do. When the neck is too flat, what you're going to do is you're going to be told where to place this Denner Roll. Okay, you'll place it here. Your, the weight of your head, gravity will pull your head back. So it's going to go like this, and it will conform itself over this roll. All you've got to do is lay back on this for 10 minutes. You are firing the slow nerve receptor. In this case, this will work too, same way, but in this particular case what we're doing is this goes to the top of the shoulder blade. Do not put this against the neck. We use this one for forward head posture. So if your head is too far forward, on its axis, I have to bring the bending moment down to here to bring the whole thing back. That's why we put you on this thing at the top of your shoulder blade. It pushes the whole thing back, so now the whole head is pushed backward over its axis, a axis so it's pushed this way. If your head's already over the axis, but the neck is too straight, we just use the denim roll, okay? Ten minutes, twice a day, minimum.